Denise, we can't hear you yet. Thank you for that. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. I didn't, Denise, I didn't, should we um, Facebook Live this or no? Yeah, I think so. I think it might get um, get in front of a few more people that way. But I was I was thinking about it. I don't know. I mean, it, if people are ever intending to share anything private or yeah, personal, that's true. I well, don't know. We'll, we'll have the audio just in case we need to transcribe. I'll skip the okay. Facebook live. Okay. So if I'm showing my if I'm sharing my screen. Can you guys still see my face? I can, yeah. Okay. Do you guys like my new background? Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> my great sunscreen. Oh, back. Jackie. Yours is awesome. You look like you're in a novel. Is it, it's the is Disney one? castle. I love it. I got a I few more. <laughs> I have I have some fancy ones that I downloaded, but I didn't, it's being inside of a book is a good idea. I just, oh no, <laughs> that was a total trial. <laughs> there are quite uh, a few more. Like we had a Zoom yesterday at work, and so I downloaded a bunch of them too. But <laughs> I thought I could do some fun ones. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Margaret, I don't know that I've met you, maybe at a conference. Um, and Maria, I'm not sure. Sure, I have met you either, but Jackie, I know I've met you. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining us. Um, where are y'all from, if I can ask? I'm from Northern Virginia, and I I think the last conference I went to was in Atlanta. I don't remember how long ago that was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. my luggage ended up getting stolen like between the two flights or something like that. So I was after that I was like completely stolen. I still don't have it back. So I was, after oh that I stopped wanting to fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. What a memory. Yeah, Jeez. right. <laughs> well, uh Maria also uh welcome and uh thank you for joining us. Where where are you from, Maria? Um, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Ah, awesome. Midwest. I grew up in St. Yeah. Louis. I was and born Jackie, in St. Remember... Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. I live in New Orleans now. Okay. A little different. And yeah. Jackie, tell me again where you live. I'm in, uh, I'm in Overland Park, Kansas, which is part of the Kansas City Metro. Okay. Midwest. All right. Midwest. Always been in the Midwest. Midwest represents. Okay. Well, um, we can go ahead and get started. I know some, some more people might join us. Um, and if you, if anybody's got a, to go, you know, that's, that's cool too. Um, we wanted to really just kind of give a chance to follow up on the COVID-19 meeting or webinar that we had two weeks ago. Um, there were so many, so many good questions that kind of came up in the chat and a lot of good feedback afterwards. And so we're trying as a staff uh, to, to really respond to that. So I guess I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Denise Scott. I have CIE. Um, I'm one of five children. Four of us have ichthyosis and my parents do not. They're just recessive carriers for it. Uh, so having been kind of in the ichthyosis world my whole life, um, it's been great for me to, to be working with FIRST um, over the last two years. So I was on the board for four years and I've been interim director um, for the last couple of months. And uh, I guess this, this crisis is kind of, you know, putting everybody in an interim spot. So uh, we're all kind of hanging out in that weird middle space right now. So. Um, with that, I'll introduce, um, I'll, allow, uh, I'll let Chris and Lisa um, introduce themselves, although you guys probably know them. I guess I'll go 
First, I'm Chris Wassel, and I'm the Community Engagement Director at First, and Lisa and I work at the, the first office, but um, a few weeks ago we stopped and now we're working from home, so we're all remote, but we are checking voicemail, we're checking email, so don't feel like you can't reach out during this time because we're definitely still here, just all in different places. Yep. And uh, I hope you're all doing well. Please stay safe. Yes, definitely. I'm Lisa Bruning. I'm the Director of Operations. I've been with FIRST uh, for 12 years. The first seven or so were part-time, and I've been full-time since then. And I've met every single one of you I see uh, at a conference or something. So it's good to see everybody again. And yes, uh, definitely stay safe. I know it's uh, kind of unnerving, and, and some people handle this whole you know, isolation thing better than others. So just know that everybody's still out here and we're, you know, and to, to Chris's point, actually I was just in the office picking up mail today. So we're checking the voicemail, we're answering, we're on our emails, so you can reach out. We're here. Okay. And I just wanted to say email's always better just because, yes. you know, check, check voicemail periodically, but email will definitely see it. All right. Well, that said, uh, I divided the the categories or the, the topics that um, that I thought we might cover into two different groups. The first being mental and emotional, and then the second being anything physical. Uh, it's it's really hard to say what is more worrisome <laughs> as we think about what our members and what our our society in in general. Uh, I think that both of these things are are you know, pretty equally important. Um, so I, I will say myself that I'm not a medical doctor, um, thankfully. Uh, I am a registered certified yoga teacher um, and I myself have been diagnosed with depression and anxiety uh, as I know the majority of folks with ichthyosis have as well. I don't know if it's quite a, a technical majority, but um, we do definitely have research that shows that people with ichthyosis are much more likely to have anxiety or depression. And so uh, we're especially sensitive to that right now during this time where I think basically everybody with a pulse has anxiety. So <laughs> understanding that our community is a little bit more affected by that um, is something that I take very seriously. So um, my background is uh, in marketing, but um, two years ago I got certified as a yoga teacher. I went through a 450 hour training and I've been teaching yoga ever since. So um, there's a couple of different things that I've learned over the years that have really helped. Um, and I think it's, you know, it's important. I'll, I'll, I'm going to jump into the content here, but uh, really just for the, the purposes of our conversation tonight, I, I'd love to, to hear from you all um, and, and make sure that we answer questions. Um, if there's a reason why you're on the call tonight, if there was something that you were looking to get out of this, um, I definitely want to make sure that we have a chance to cover that. Uh, and a chance to share. Um, what struck me is how great the conferences are for hearing about products that can truly change your life that you never would have thought about. And we've all had those moments where, you know, someone recommends that you try something that's just slightly different and it is a real game changer. So um, I do want us to, to be able to share some of that real specific stuff that might really help us get through this. Um, and I, I understand that we're a small group today, so I, I really appreciate the intimacy here. Um, and if there's anything that anybody wants to share privately, we can definitely take it off the record. Um, but for now, um, I'd like to, to be able to take notes and maybe share if, if there are ideas. Um, that as a staff, we'd love to, we always like to share what works uh, to, so that other members can have the benefit of the trials and tribulations of those of us that have kind of gone gone down it and figured it out the hard way, so to speak. So um, that said, um, I'll dive into the, the content here. So we'll start with mental and emotional. Uh, this is, uh, again, I mean, it's something that um, I hope we're all aware of uh, having, you know, ichthyosis or not, but uh, the mental and emotional toll of having um, an economic crisis in and of itself is, is huge. Uh, but to add a health crisis on top of it is really an understandable um, mental hurdle. Uh, and it's a lot. It's a big weight to carry. 
And the the benefit is is that we're all facing it. Um, with ichthyosis, we're used to being the only one <laughs> to have to have that problem or to be overheating or to really need sunscreen. Um, but in this case, we're all on the same playing field. And um, I do think that those of us with ichthyosis that have developed resilience over the years have an upper hand here now because we're used to health threats that are really scary, that um, we feel really um, angry about, frankly. Um, especially as a teenager, I was really angry about having a theosis. And now today I was, um, I had to go run and get groceries and I went to um, an ethnic market to get a few ingredients that I needed for a particular recipe. Um, and so I didn't really think about it. Um, but I went into this particular market um, and I had only, I've only been out maybe twice in the last two weeks. Um, but this market had no social distancing uh, like components or mechanisms in place at all. So everybody was really close to one another. Um, and it was like making me so angry. <laughs> and uh, in preparing for this call, I realized that like, I'm angry about COVID-19 and I'm angry that um, here in New Orleans that we weren't warned about it, that we still don't have the tests that we need um, and that people still aren't taking it seriously. The data has been changing and the news has been slow, but now we know very clearly that we should all stay home and when we're out, we need to be six feet apart at least, washing hands constantly uh, and, and being very mindful of the human beings that are around us and what we're touching. So. Um, that anger and that, uh, that sort of feeling of um, being so um, compelled, I guess, um, or unhappy. I mean, frankly, like I'm, I'm pretty unhappy <laughs> that we're all missing out on months of our lives. Um, and I think as a person with ichthyosis, I've, I've felt that before. I've been unhappy that I can't wear sandals. I've been unhappy that I can't wear black. I've been unhappy that I can't jump in and out of a pool 18 times a day. Um, and still look great. Um, my skin would be a disaster. So um, there's a lot here that we're already familiar with. And so I guess I want to lead with that, that um, I think that we can always learn from our previous experiences. Um, and that helps us carry that burden a little bit, um, a little bit more easily going forward. So um, I, I'm, uh, I'm really nervous about how long <laughs> this crisis is going to last. Um, so I'll, I'll put that out there, but I do think that some of the skills that we've picked up as being um, a person with ichthyosis, I think that that will give us a leg up. Um, I can jump into some breathing exercises. Um, does anybody have any anything to add to, um, to that kind of anger, bitterness, uh, people about social distancing? <laughs> All right, so uh, breathing exercises are one trick that, um, that I'm thrilled to share with you because it's something of, of value that, um, that I know can help everybody right away. So um, you can do it anywhere and it costs nothing and it's scientifically proven to help with some of these things like anger and anxiety um, and insomnia. So stress management as well. Uh, so we know neurologically that um, when we get stressed, our breathing shortens and it comes up like a little bit higher and we're not breathing from our belly. Uh, and so our brain kind of matches that with this fight or flight response. And we're actually using less of our brain during that response. When the sympathetic nervous system is activated, um, we're breathing and I, I explain this to kids all the time because when they're scared or when they're crying, their breathing quickens. Um, and so the, the cool thing is that we can reverse that and just by lengthening the breath and by, by concentrating on overriding it, we can almost trick the body into thinking that there is no stress there. So there's a very real threat out there. Um, and this is a really difficult situation that we're in. But if we allow our breathing to become shallow, it will only make it worse for our brains and our body's perception of that stress. 
So there's a number of different breathing exercises um, that have been, you know, tried and tested over millennia. Um, there's a lot of videos. If you want to go uh, look at videos, if you're that kind of person, um, there's a really good article I found um, easily in Scientific American, uh, depending on what kind of data or, um, I guess, educational resources you're into. Um, the app Insight Timer is free, and there's a lot of different tools on it that can help you uh, with guided visualizations, guided meditations. I like that one a lot. So if you're trying to develop a meditation or breathing habit, you can use that app for free, and it's very easy to, to kind of develop a habit. So I'll do, um, I'll show you guys right now if we can all do it together, that might be kind of fun. But um, this is a, an exercise that I use in, in a lot of my yoga classes because I find it to personally be the most powerful. Um, a lot of really famous people, Hillary Clinton, use it. Um, it's, uh, it's called Nadi Shodhana or alternate nostril breathing. So if you take your right hand in front of your face like this, um, go ahead, Lisa and Chris. I'm going to make you guys do it. <laughs> so you take your hand in front of your face, hold down your two peace fingers. Um, and this is a little bit hard for people with ichthyosis. So I always say in my classes, like, if that's awkward, just use these two fingers. It doesn't really matter. The traditional hold would be like this, though. So we're going to switch our nostrils to breathe. And what this is going to do is um, help connect both sides of our brain, the thinking and the feeling side. So two piece fingers down, close right, and we'll inhale through the left. Two, three, four. Switch, exhale through the right. Two, three, four. Stay, inhale right. Two, three, four. Five is where we really want to be. Switch, exhale left. Two, three, four, five. Few more rounds. Inhale left. Two, three, four, five. Switch, exhale right. Two, three, four, five. Release the hand, take a big deep breath in through both nostrils, seal the lips, and exhale through the nose. You did it. So that particular breathing exercise is really good for anxiety uh, because you're, you're cueing, again, both sides of the brain to, to kind of fire off and be balanced. So um, that's a great one. Simply elongating your exhale is another really tried and true way of helping bring that sense of calm into your body. So um, if there's a couple of times a day, if you can just be aware of your breathing, if you're sitting in traffic or um, I know we're around the house all the time now, but if you can tie it to a part of your routine, if you breathe while you're making coffee, or if you breathe while you're looking at mail, or if you breathe while your dog is eating, um, those things we know make it easier for these habits to stick. Um, Anybody Denise, have any questions? Oh, uh -huh. Denise, I just, I just wanted to point out the chat function down below. If you hover your um, arrow down below on the screen, there's a chat yeah. function. If you, if someone's speaking and you want to get a word in, or you don't even feel like speaking yeah. up, okay. feel free to use that. Yes. I didn't have my chat box open, thanks. All right. Margaret has something to add when we talk about doctors. Cool. Okay. Um, anybody have anything to add on breathing? Or that meditation? It. <laughs> yeah, it's powerful stuff, man. It is seriously powerful. Uh, I, I think Jackie so, looks chilled out now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, as uh, when I was going through training and I was really nervous about teaching my first yoga class, uh, the joke was always that yoga teachers start a class with a breathing exercise, not for you, but for themselves. <laughs> and it's, it's really true. So, um, yes, it's, it's awesome. 
Um, I like that one. There's a lot of others. Um, you can also pair mantra with it. So if you're just breathing and you don't want to hold and close nostrils, um, you can tie um, a specific thought to it. So you could say like, I'm inhaling peace, I'm exhaling fear. And just do that for a couple of minutes. Um, and if you were to try that or um, really for any of these breathing exercises, if you can count to four, that's great. Five is really where you want to be um, if you're trying to, to aim for something. Next on our list is staying connected. Uh, I think that this one is, um, it's, it's funny because I heard that now we're not supposed to call it social distancing. We're supposed to call it physical distancing. <laughs> because of the importance of our social relationships. So we know that people are more resilient to disease when they are better connected. People with friends live longer and they are better at beating cancer. Um, it improves your immune system to stay connected to, um, to your, your friends, your people, your family. So uh, we consider first to be one outlet for people. And so we're taking this one very seriously as we uh, kind of navigate through this crisis with you all. Um, in terms of staying connected for your families and with your friends, um, I wanted to, to just open it up and ask if anybody has um, any specific struggles or questions for the group or ideas, anything that has kind of come up that you know, has, has seemed relevant to this topic. Um, I feel like my family's actually gotten a lot closer throughout the physical distancing aspect of it because um, both my immediate family and my extended family have started doing weekly Zoom calls with like everybody on board. So we get to see each other's faces more often and hear what's going on in each other's lives more than we ever did in the past. That's so cool. Yeah, I was going to say, my family has been doing that too. And what's interesting though, I was like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> because nobody's out doing anything. We're all just staying in. So it's really, I, I, we, you know, we kind of run out of stuff to talk about. But it is nice to see everyone's faces, that's for sure. We're, we're social beings. We're, we're designed for social interaction. And this is just bizarre, <laughs> frankly. I mean, I've worked from home for most of my career. And this is, you know, this is a different level to me, um, significantly different. Very uh, different. Yeah. My, work is actually, my work is actually, we started last week, we did a Zoom, and now we've kind of all agreed to start doing it. So we had our second one yesterday. So it's kind of becoming a, a Tuesday work from home Zoom with all the work pals. And honestly, I think it'd be awesome to keep doing it because more than half the company is already remote, and I think we don't get enough of that. So... You know, the, even if this little bit starts something, maybe, even if it's not once a week like we're doing now, it, it's amazing. It's just, it's amazing. Just full, even if it's for an hour, 30 minutes. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because my, um, I have a seven year old son, and, you know, seven year olds are, do you guys know how funny the word poop is? Like, it's the funniest word you'll ever hear. Um, it's just, you know, it's such a great word. I'm so glad I get to hear it 7,000 times a day now. Uh, but she has this need to connect with his friends and talk, um, the way that seven year olds do all day long, uh, at school. And so he's been connecting with his friends, um, through, uh, an app called house party, which is like a social network. It's crazy. So my little seven year old is like, basically in an AOL chat room of 2020, um, only there's a video function and he's introducing his friends that have moved out of the school that now live in other parts of the country and it's, it's wild. So um, I think that it's important for everybody at every age to remember to, to, to check in with one another. So um, if there are people in your life that are older um, or that are, you know, kind of always on the fringes, um, 
it's a great time to, to try to draw those people in. Uh, and same with kids. I mean, uh, if you've got friends with kids or nieces or nephews or um, if you know anybody with kids, this is kind of a uniquely chaotic time for us. And sometimes we just want our kid to, like, go shut up and leave us alone. <laughs> um, and so if you like kids, you know, you can volunteer to read them a book over, uh, you know, FaceTime or whatever it might be. Um, kids love drawings. You can send them little drawings if you've got one of those apps on your phone or the, the little iPhone app. So just a couple of ideas. Uh, next on the list is building a routine. Uh, this is another neurological trick. Um, our brain and our hormones and um, our digestion, um, so many physical processes uh, do better when they are well regulated. And so if you've got a chance to, um, to smooth out any of the inconsistencies in your life from day to day, um, the, the advice here is always, to try to go to bed around the same time and try to wake up around the same time. Uh, I think that the window that they like, the experts like, is about an hour um, going to bed within about an hour time window and then always waking up within an hour time window. Uh, same goes for eating. If you can kind of stick to a schedule with eating um, and if you're in a house where you're, you know, you're quarantined with a lot of other people, I think that this one could be especially important to reduce that friction and the tension of, you know, everybody is eating at different times and, you know, people are very loud right now or, um, you know, struggles over limited bathroom space, things like that. So routine, routine, routine. Uh, and I'm, I'm fortunate that, um, you know, I just, I, I live alone with my son and I only have him every other week. So uh, it's pretty easy to have pretty strict control over my world here, but I'm very aware that most people are uh, not in that situation. So um, any, any advice or comments or questions or frustrations here? Chris is living at home with five daughters right now, I think. <laughs> uh, five daughters and a husband, a dog and a cat. So um, we do, um, we are tripping over each other, but um, it is very much a routine. I think even the schools around here, they're saying, you know, they want you, if you're going to log in to these classes, they want you to be dressed, your hair brushed, paying attention, yeah. not laying in bed. I mean, you really do have to um, continue to, to move forward, not getting to these bad habits so I'm, i know that's re that is really important for everybody whether it's school or work um it is very important it helps um it helps bring a sense of of control and control is really calming for anxiety there's so much in this that we can't control uh but if we can focus on the parts that we can uh, it's it's oftentimes simplifying our emotional reactions to things throughout the day. Um, if we know that we've got breakfast on lockdown and we're always going to bed around the same time and everybody in our life kind of knows what to expect. Um, for example, my son, he knows that about 3 p.m. every day, he's got unlimited screen time to FaceTime whoever he wants and he can talk as long as he's out to schoolwork. Uh, and so knowing that that's kind of part of the plan is um, it's very helpful for him. Um, and for me, too, because I, I feel like I'm not losing my mind all day. I know that, like, um, I, I know what to expect. And so my brain isn't going in overdrive uh, because I do feel like our brains only have so much space. And the more frayed our nerves are, the worse everything becomes. So our coping mechanisms, it's, um, it really snowballs. Uh, and it can, you know, it can snowball. Um, out of control, and the opposite is also true, that our good habits can help bridge and scaffold us up to, to better habits. So uh, it's very important to, to recognize, I think, the power of repeated action. The next item is to take breaks. Um, in, embedded in this is the idea that we need to be aware of where our attention is going. In yoga, we say, um, wherever, you, wherever your attention is, you are making bigger. 
So if you focus on problems, you will make problems bigger. If you focus on love and peace and solutions, you will make that bigger. If you focus on what is wrong with your body or your skin, in your mind, you will be making that bigger. Uh, if you focus on what's amazing about your skin, the fact that you can grab a hot pan and that your skin is multiplying faster than anybody could ever imagine, um, you're making that bigger. So uh, where our intention and where our focus is, is very important. And right now, uh, I'm super guilty of this. It's so easy to just turn on the news and watch three hours of it before bed, uh, which is terrible. You shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't be exposing yourself to really traumatic things uh, at the end of the day. Uh, the experts, I think, recommend to have a news time of your day, and then after that to say no more. I don't need to worry about that anymore. And I know for, uh, for anxiety, uh, one of the most effective coping mechanisms I've ever been taught is the, the idea of I don't need to worry about that right now. So I'll be laying in bed and I'll start worrying about something and the only way that I can get myself to stop thinking about it is to say, I don't need to worry about that right now. <laughs> and I'll sometimes make a mental note to myself to worry about it the next day. Truly, I will. But to tell yourself that you don't need to worry about it right now in this moment, in this moment, it's my job to relax, to let go of everything in the day, and to allow my body to restore and to rejuvenate. That is my job. I don't need to worry about that other thing right now. And so it, with this crisis, there's, you know, there's always a chance. And, you know, our phones can be ringing all day and people, you know, you might have a friend that wants to talk first thing in the morning and then you've got somebody that wants to talk in the, in the afternoon. And it's important to put up boundaries and to, to say, you know, I'm, I'm already sort of vented out on this for today. Um, and to be able to communicate that with each other, with your coworkers, with your family, with um, anybody that, that is in a relationship with you that feels like they can vent to you, that is great. It's awesome to be that person, but we all owe ourselves the respect of drawing the boundary around it and saying, I can't do this right now. Can we make an appointment to talk about this tomorrow? And maybe that's like not the, the that's a clinical way to say it, but the idea is that you don't want to like turn your back on the person, but also you can't allow yourself to just be subject to this terrible news and these horrible conversations about how much money people are losing and how scared they are and ventilators and masks and doctors and front lines and restaurants. And you have to be able to protect your time because if you don't, you will not be able to cope and manage with anything at all. So it might feel selfish, but it's really the only way that you will be able to sustain yourself through this. This is not going to go away soon. And one of my favorite expressions is you can't pour from an empty cup. And if you are emptying yourself every day because you have five kids in your house and you're making them all lunch or you're dealing with all of their problems all day long, and then you're also taking on a lot of other things, you can empty yourself out all day long and then there will be nothing left to give and you'll be exhausted. And the, the kicker is that you'll be decreasing your immunity. <laughs> you'll be making yourself more subject to the virus. You'll be decreasing your ability to handle future stress and you'll be increasing your likelihood of anxiety and depression. So even if you are <laughs> afraid of being selfish or you think that self-care is too much of a luxury, um, make sure that you're modeling the right behavior for your family and that you are protecting your ability to give to them tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So we are getting through this, but only if we continue to maintain our ability, our, it, we need to be sustainable about this. So, you know, a little bit of news goes a long way and a little bit of venting goes a long way. Uh, likewise, mind your own words, and if you're venting all day long to a lot of different people about it, you're going to be making the, the problems in your head bigger. Uh, and that's not a scientific uh, perspective, that's my own uh, perspective, of course, but I, I do think that uh, the way that we spend our time is important, and it does overall contribute to a feeling of either stress or management. 
And nobody feels great right now, but some of us are tail spinning out of control into the stressed out zone, and then others feel like there are ways to get through this. And that's where we need to be. So whatever it is that you need to stay more in that positive frame of mind, you have to be making sure that you're making that a priority every day. That's the other my thing, so far. One, oh, go ahead. Did someone else start to talk? No. Oh, okay, because I was going to say, taking breaks, I really do think uh, laughing, um, you know, really just, I, I, I know my family's been taking advantage of the TikTok videos. Has anyone done that? Like, they're totally silly videos that you take of yourself to music and um, really just making fun of each other. <laughs> Your family I, I, does I, them well, too, Chris. Uh-oh, you've seen them, Lisa? <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, that one. It's, um, it is very important, like Denise said, get off TV, but also just laugh, get some fresh air, go out on your patio if that's as far as you're allowed to go, um, and just, yeah, take a break from everything, because it is, it does get overwhelming, that's for sure. Is anyone, if, if any of you are parents, anyone dealing, like, are their children having a harder time than they are, or is it hard to manage both? anxiety from both angles i didn't know if it was the kids are i know in the beginning my kids were removed from it they kind of didn't believe it and i think as a parent you always um you have a lot of more life experiences so you take things harder i don't know if anyone's having trouble um with their children or is it really the anxiety from yourself Uh, worrying about something. Oh, we see something here from Jackie that worrying about something or something to do, write it down um, and deal with it another time. Okay. I don't have kids, yeah, but I teach. It's so powerful. It's a, Margaret, it's a way of, of getting the, the toxin out. Uh, we talked about, you know, filling your bucket or, you know, having a, a, a full cup to pour from. Um, part of that is is detox and and hygiene of taking out those worries and those negative thoughts. So um, I don't think that it's possible for people to be positive all the time. I think that um, that's really baloney in this <laughs> situation. So writing down what is not positive uh, and calling attention to it and accepting it and thinking about it at another time or writing out strategies if it is a problem that has a solution really important, really powerful. Um, thanks, Jackie. Margaret says that she sees anxiety in the kids. Yeah. What grade do you teach, Margaret? I teach kindergarten through sixth grade music. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> um, and I sent out a questionnaire for the third through sixth graders yesterday, just checking in saying how you doing is there anything i can do for you how's music been in your life stuff like that and some of them have said that they're worried about their friends and people that they're not able to see right now oh it's so hard because they don't i mean they have no idea and when you're so young and this is happening you just sort of feel like this is had to have happened before. Adults are in charge. They know what to do. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's not the case. Sorry. And also, and also, when you said building a routine, it gets people, that helps with, you know, the whole stress thing. Breaking of a routine, which this whole thing is, is so disruptive to everything. So if you can build back a routine that, you know, because everything else is you know, disrupted. It really does yeah. help, I do believe, yeah. Yeah, for sure. There's nothing more disruptive than nobody being able to go to school or work <laughs> for an unknown period of time. It's a, a really friends. terrible survey. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, we can move on to the physical aspects and some physical concerns which admittedly I know much less about, um, but 
you know, I've, I've been uh, quite um, immersed in the information and the ichthyosis specific parts of it that we do know um, have been of particular interest to me. Um, but one thing that I, I found to be really interesting is um, that a lot of the ichthyosis specialists don't um, or they didn't immediately realize um, that behaviors in people with ichthyosis are really highly correlated to disease to the spread of this disease. So we might not be at any greater risk than the average person, uh, but we're touching our mouths a lot more. We're touching our faces a lot more. We can't use hand sanitizer. And oftentimes we avoid washing our hands because it cracks. Um, and it's just uncomfortable and we might not have lotion with us. So all of these things together, I think, put people with ichthyosis at a greater risk. Um, it's not the ichthyosis, it's the behaviors. And so for those things, I've been spending a lot of time with them. Um, and there's a couple of things that I've, I've sort of figured out. Um, one is, these are my like, I don't know, old old wives tales tips and tricks um not medically endorsed at all but if you use a hand lotion that is like really pepperminty or like really gross tasting you'll put your hands in your mouth much less <laughs> um because you know we're i'm i'm always like oh it's just a just a sharp piece of skin that i don't really want to cut myself with and so it's just it's it's so um it's so automatic, we don't even think about it. Um, the other thing is wearing gloves. If you have surgical gloves in your house already, I know a lot of us do, um, you're much less likely to touch your face if you have that glove, but you're also not interacting with the problems going on with your hands. My hands can be really problematic. They get very dry. Um, I have all kinds of issues with my hands. If I'm wearing gloves um, with you know a layer of lotion on, not only is my skin kind of more taken care of, but also I'm putting a, a physical barrier between myself and dealing with that skin issue. So if I'm in public, um, it might not be as much of a problem for me that I have a crack in my hand or that I have a really dry, um, you know, fissure or whatever it might be because you've got gloves on, on top of it. So in those situations, I have worn surgical gloves. And then if I'm out and washing my hands in public, I leave the gloves on and I just wash the gloves. Uh, and then when I'm back to my car, um, I'll take the gloves off at that point um, because I feel like my car and my house are kind of my space um, and it's easier to sanitize those situations and I've got lotion in those situations as well. So um, just something that works for me. Uh, any, any input or ideas? What's working for you guys in terms of all of the hand washing? I feel like my hands are just going to like crack off and I live in a warm, humid climate. I feel fortunate being able to wash my hands off and, and be at home. So being at home, I can put lotion on immediately. Um, I, I know that that's a little rare occasion because over the years I haven't had that luxury, but that's been at least helpful. I like the glove idea. However, I just haven't had to use it, but I'm definitely going to look at doing that when I get in those situations again. So, Yeah, it's, um, it's really strange to be at a disadvantage for something that everybody takes for granted like hand washing. <laughs> It's really odd. It's, yeah. Uh, anybody, I wanted to find out if anybody had a hand sanitizer that they like. I don't think it exists personally, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> I know that you can make them yourself with aloe, but the whole point is that you have, it has to be at least 60% alcohol, 60, I think, yeah. 60 or 70%. 60, I think, um, it's still pretty high, yeah. So at that point, there's nothing that you can do to overcome that um, except put lotion on right away afterwards. And for, unfortunately, I, I usually, if I'm 
if I don't have lotion, I'm like it's it's terrible. So I got to be in a really bad situation. At that terrible grocery store that I went to today, they had hand sanitizer, and I was like, <laughs> uh, and now my hands are all cracked for it. Um, but we do what we got to do. Uh, access to doctors, uh, Margaret. I know you had a question or a comment about this. Um, access to doctors and hospitals. What can we help you with? Yeah. So last March, I was diagnosed with squamous cell skin cancer. I have Netherton syndrome, by the way. And I have not been very comfortable with the treatment I've gotten from the dermatologist. The surgeon has been pretty helpful. Um, but I'm seeing a new dermatologist on April 15th. And I can't figure out whether I should risk going out to see her or not. Have you heard from their office at all? They sent an email saying to call them if we had questions about whether or not to come in. But I'm not sure they would even know the answer either because I'm a new patient to them. Yeah. Uh, did they mention any option for telemedicine? They did. Yeah. Um, is it, if, if it's possible, I would, I would encourage anybody to look at telemedicine unless it's something that you feel like needs to be seen in person or you need a physical um, treatment of some sort of shot or something like that, a uh, biopsy. But if they are offering telemedicine, um, I would think that between now and April 15th, they should have that system pretty well worked out. Uh, but you could call them. I mean, things have been changing so quickly that you could call them a couple of days out and see what they recommend at that point. But um, this is a, a dermatology meeting or this is a, an oncology meeting? I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. It's a new dermatologist. I actually had an appointment with an oncology dermatologist at INOVA, but they canceled that one because of the requirement yeah. of INOVA. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I would follow the advice of, of the office, and if they if they think that it's safe for patients to come in, I mean, they might have a, a dedicated entrance, and they might have their system like completely on lockdown. Um, if they are offering telemedicine and encouraging that, then I would do that. Um, but I I hope for sure that you can get help one way or another. Um, it's great that they're even trying to keep the schedule. I think that a lot of doctors' offices are just kind of canceling everything. So yeah. I want to, to make sure that you still get care one way or another. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, are there specific risks that you're concerned about because of being um, or, or having um, ichthyosis? Um, I feel like I qualify for the few that have the compromised immune system because I've gone since like January, I've had the flu, a UTI that was not detected until I saw a urologist, um, like other infections just the, from January to now that make me nervous. Yeah. I was, I was on a call this morning with the doctors and people were asking the same question and they said, it really should be a joint decision with your doctor in your specific case. You really should just reach out, ask them those questions, and together you can make an informed decision. I know, I mean, I was at a doctor just last Friday. They took my temperature in the lobby. I was the only one in the office. The doctor talked to me from across the room. Um, you know, that's not speaking to, you know, compromised immune system, but... Uh, you know, they really do try to make the decision with you. So I would absolutely reach out. Okay. Great advice, Chris. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One item I've got on this list is, to, is getting the product you need. Uh, I think that it's, you know, every element of our lives are being impacted by this thing. Uh, and one of them, of course, is the normal way that we go about, you know, procuring all of the, the products that we use. Um, one thought that I had is that since we're all home, it might be an interesting time to try experimenting with stuff because um, 
you don't want to experiment with stuff if you're going to be in front of people and you're causing yourself some kind of like dryness or shedding or whatever. So it might be a good time to try a different kind of exfoliant or to try um, making your own compound um, or to try a different brand. I know that I've got a box of samples from like every conference I've been to probably. I don't know, even know how expired this stuff is, but you collect the products and the, the, the idea is that now might be a good time to use that stuff, um, especially if you're running out because you're trying to reduce how much, um, you know, how much shopping you're doing. Uh, so an interesting thought um, to me was, was to try to, to make my own compound. So I've been making um, coconut, whipped coconut body butter uh, and trying to come up with a recipe that is strong enough. <laughs> And uh, I'm like a mad scientist crossed with like a crazy like Betty Crocker in my kitchen with a, a stand mixer and a, a gallon bucket of coconut oil from Costco. And I've got essential oils and mineral oil and liquid glycerin and vitamin E oil. Uh, and so I'm working on hacking that recipe um, for everybody. I'll let you know. Have you guys had any experiences with um, changes in your routine or difficulty getting products or um, taking this time to try something new? I, well, I, I, I yes, I've about. I thought about trying stuff new, but I really haven't. I've already been so aware of and having ichthyosis and beans that I get stuff by mail, when I get down to a certain level, I always order it. So I feel like I've already been prepared because I never get to that point, you know. It's so yeah, I, I feel like I'm at an advantage of that, but I understand that it can be difficult, you know, being this way. But I'm definitely interested to see what people have been able to make and 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 transition to that however i know i i don't know if it's gonna if it'll work if it's cost efficient but this definitely i would say it's definitely the time and i'm with you i've got a stockpile of stuff too from the last few conferences probably expired but <laughs> hey, so <laughs> yeah some of that stuff is really pricey if you try to go out and buy it um yeah, but I guess the caveat that I'll that I'll give is, um, you know, be careful if you are going to try something new. Uh, understand that your body is already under stress. If you are a human being that has a pulse right now, you are experiencing greater levels of stress, which leads to inflammation in the skin, which can make um, make us a little bit more um, responsive. Um, I I know that I've had problems with itch in the last couple of days that I. I mean, I, I very rarely struggle with itch. So um, I'm suggesting that we, we consider trying new things, but also keeping a routine is important. And so um, please be careful uh, and don't take, <laughs> don't take any advice uh, and just run with it because I think we all know with ichthyosis that um, each individual is really going to have a high degree of um, personalization required for them to find the, the right care regimen for themselves. Um, one uh, one other tip that I'll share on on the infl the inflammation um, issue is that there are a couple of different things. If you're finding yourself um, with a rash or with skin that is really just um, inflamed because of the stress, and even if you're keeping all the rest of your products the same, um, your skin might be more itchy or more susceptible to an infection or um, a, responding in any number of ways to all of these differences. Your diet is probably changing. Um, your physical um, exercise is probably changing. It might be going up, it might be going down. Uh, but notice your skin and take care of it. It might be helpful to, um, to try something like taking more baths. Um, I know as adults, we often let our skincare regimen slide. Uh, because we're taking care of other people or we feel like we've got a good handle on it. Uh, but it, it might be that right now you need uh, a little bit of extra time. If there's a soothing bath regimen that helps you 
Um, make sure that you've got that product on hand to use um, in case you do have a flare up in the next couple of days. Um, the two things that work really well for me are to add a can of regular coconut oil, I'm sorry, coconut milk to a bath. Um, I find that to be very soothing. I pour it over my body out of the can into the tub and then I just sit in the bathtub. It's amazing. Uh, just a can of coconut milk from Whole Foods or wherever you go, it's like two bucks. It's amazing. Um, the other thing that I like to use is to spray rose water on my skin when it's really dry or inflamed, especially if there's a lot of redness. Uh, for me personally, um, if I spray, spray rose water on my skin, um, that will not only soothe the redness, but also decrease the itch and help hydrate as well. I think for those of us with ichthyosis, it's always very refreshing to splash water on our faces, but then it dries us out. So rose water is a hydrating fluid that gives you that sensation of that wetness that, that feels so nice to us uh, without being as drying. So just two little things that I've found that work uh, for me. Um, it looks like somebody's asking about Buyer's Door program. Uh, so does anybody know uh, what the, the official line is from Buyer's Door? Chris or Lisa, maybe you guys I have, mean, have... I did, I did see some... Um conversations going on in the private Facebook groups and people were saying they were still getting it. Um, I did not see anyone say that they were not able to. Um, I don't know, Lisa, did you see anything different? No, I, have, no, I haven't seen anything either. That, you know, yeah. As far as I know, they're still you know, doing their thing. So yeah. that's, that's I haven't seen any statements from them. That's mm -mm. Here. Has anybody yeah. on the call had issues with getting their product? No, but just that, you know, we've noticed um, um, delivery times are definitely lengthening um, across all re uh, vendors, um, Amazon, yeah. Wal uh, Walgreens. So I don't know how they prioritize um, things, but, you know, you can expect to wait um, if you... Actually, that's a, that's a great point. You know, you can't wait until the last minute for sure, but... That build that into your request for you know. That's actually a great point. I think they, they were prioritizing necessities. You know. I don't know how they I would know. know. Amazon. Yeah. Amazon is prioritizing the necessities. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon is prioritizing things that they think are really funny because how is Amazon going to know what is a necessity to me or not? <laughs> like, yeah, I, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but yes, the advice that I've seen is to, um, to try to have uh, a, a supply to last you at least a couple of weeks. Um, a three month supply is really great if you are going out and you have the, um, the ability to, to get that much product and to pay for it. Um, three months is, is the recommended amount for pharmaceuticals. Um, and so I would think that in our case, even if it's an over-the-counter cream, um, we should basically treat it like a pharmaceutical and having a three-month supply on hand um, might make us all feel a little bit better during these times. Well, we're coming up on the hour here. Um, is there anything uh, that anybody else has questions on or um, any comments? Anybody have anything to share that might help others? Anything that's working for you? I have switched a while ago to using baby oil on my scalp that has cocoa and shea butter in it. And for some reason, I have not had to comb dry skin off my scalp. So and so I, you're, 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 sorry, go baby ahead. Baby oil and shea butter, you said? It's baby oil that already has shea butter and cocoa butter in it. Oh, cool. I used to use the kind that has aloe, and I still had to comb my scalp every morning. And now I just let the baby oil sit on my scalp all night, and then I can condition or wash my hair the next morning, and it's good to go. And it's not, uh, it doesn't thicken the scales, it loosens them? Yeah. That's awesome. 
I found coconut oil sometimes really like makes my like it thickens the scales, it, like uh -huh. seals them together on my yeah. scalp. I think with leather tins, the skin is like thinner, so mm -hmm. it doesn't have the same kind of scaling effect. I guess it does peel, yeah. but it yeah it doesn't. I don't know why it helps my scalp like that, but it has, and I'm so thankful for that. That's great. That's always good to to hear. And when I'm interacting with parents uh, that are looking for products, sometimes it's like just keep trying. You know, uh, sometimes the weirdest thing, switching a brand, can make a difference. Switching the formulation, like you said, switching from aloe. Who would have thought? That's great to hear, though. Yeah. Before before we end the call, I just wanted to ask you all if anyone has any ideas for future topics that we can cover, something that you might be interested in. Um, just a thought. And if you, if you can't think of it off the top of your head, if you could email the office, that would be great. Yeah, we're we're trying to address this new world that we're living in right now and make sure that we're giving people a chance to ask questions and to connect with each other. Uh, I personally love seeing people with ichthyosis. It, it makes me feel um, not so alone. And it's just, um, it's a unique thrill to, to video chat with people with ichthyosis. And so I, I appreciate you all being here. Uh, those of you that have shared camera, um, and then those of you too that are just listening in um, I really just, I mean, I, I think the world of this community, I've seen the ways that everybody is helping one another through this with feedback and advice and even sending products to each other. Uh, it's, it's truly amazing, the, the human spirit. We're getting through this and uh, it's no easy feat, but there is resilience that comes from, from getting through difficult things. Um, and those of us with ichthyosis, we, we know all about that. So, uh, Thank you everyone for being here. Again, we do have a plan. Uh, we would like things like this to you all as we go through the summer without having a conference. Uh, we are looking for new programs to develop to meet your needs. So please do email us either at info or if you've got me or Chris or Lisa's email address, please reach out to us. You can also uh, hit us up in the Facebook groups. I know that that's a, a great place to, um, to kind of interact and share with one another and see uh, what everybody else thinks. So um, I'm going to keep working on my coconut oil formulation. You all keep working on what's working for you. And um, I will see you all uh, probably in the Facebook groups next. Um, and if not, maybe on one of these next calls. So thanks a lot for being here tonight, everybody. I hope you all are safe and secure and, and healthy um, and happy as much as possible. So um, please feel free to reach out to me directly if you've got questions or if you want to follow up on anything that I shared. Um, I will caveat everything. Uh, I think I tried to during the call, but uh, most of what I shared is what works for me personally. I encourage everybody to use their own wisdom about what works for themselves, for their type of ichthyosis. Uh, and I'm, I'm not a medical professional, so um, please don't, uh, don't take an idea and run with it and then be angry with me. Um, just trying to help sharing one person's opinion here. So um, thank you, everybody. And thank you to Chris and Lisa for helping organize this. Um, it's just been so great seeing you all. So this has been a high point of my week. So thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye, Bye yes. everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.